Buongiorno ragazzi, welcome to a new Italian 101 video. Today's topic is actually a review of the topic we did for the last video. Uh, it's a review of the verb essere and the pronouns, but in the last video we just introduced them very briefly. Today we're going to focus more on the uses of both the personal pronouns and the verb essere, okay? First, I'm going to remind you of this, which we presented very, very briefly in the last video. Italian personal pronouns. So it are personal pronouns. Well, pronouns are basically words that we use instead of the whole name of something or someone when we want to simplify what we are saying. For example, if I want to refer to myself, I could say Umberto or myself all the time, right? But we want to make it shorter, so we say I. I is a personal pronoun in English, right? The same way when I'm talking to you, I could use your name all the time, right? I could say Johnny or uh, Maria or what have you, right? But we want to make it shorter sometimes, so instead of using your name, I use a personal pronoun. I say you, right? And within the context, it's clear who I'm talking to or who I'm talking about, right? So Italian personal pronouns are the same right they are used as short versions of names and here they are let's pronounce them i pronounced you pronounce afterwards io that means i tu that it's you right but remember, we have several forms for you in Italian. Tu is when you're talking to one person and you're being informal. Lei, that's also for talking to one person, but it's formal. Notice that this formal lei has a capital L. Okay? when it is the personal pronoun you when it's for talking to someone in a respectful manner this pronoun has a capital L then we have lui just means he we also have lei that means she when it means she and not you lei does not have a capital L Okay, so lei can mean both you in a formal manner or she. Then we have noi, which means we, voi, which means you guys. Notice again we have. A special version for when we're talking to a group of people, right? We don't say to, we don't say le, we say voi. And finally, loro, which means they. Okay? So those are the pronouns, but I want us to think a little bit about how they are actually used. So let's do a little exercise. Let's think about what personal pronoun I need to use when I talk about certain people. To talk about people, or, well, things, I have these possibilities. I have io for I, well, you know, when talking about myself. I have lui for he. I have lei for she. Right, I have noi for we, or I have loro for they. Okay, 
we're talking about we're talking about myself what pronoun do I use in Italian well this is where I use io right that is the use of io io means I right to talk about my, to talk about myself what if I'm going to talk about Giovanna well clearly Giovanna is a woman right so what would I use in English? I would use she. So in Italian, I use le. How about hostess students? What would I use to talk about hostess students? Talk about them, I, I would use they in English. So what do I use in Italian? I use loro. Right? How about talking about my professor but this professor is a woman I would use she in English right so we use lei in Italian what if I want to talk about humanity in general about all of us human beings in English I would use we so in Italian I use noi and if I want to talk about Johnny, right? Johnny is clear, clearly a guy, right? So I, I would use he. In English, I use lui in Italian. Now I'm talking about a group of people that includes myself, Giovanna and me. What would I say in English? We. So what do I say in Italian? I say no. And if I want to talk about my professor, but but this time he is a guy, what do I use? I don't use lei, I use lui. Right? What if I want to talk about my wife and myself? Again, a group of people that includes myself. That's noi, right? Because that's we. And what if I want to talk about exciting things, like these grammatical exercises? I know. But... Hey, notice that this is not a person or a group of people. But yes, you use pronouns also for talking about things or, or ideas, right? So in this case, grammatical exercises. Well, what would you say in English? You would say they, right? They're boring. And they are. I admit it. But they're important, right? So we're using they in English. What would we use in Italian? We would use a loro. Loro. Right, so just like in English, in Italian, sometimes personal pronouns are used to talk about things that are not people, right? But it's quite simple. It's exactly the same way that you would use it in English, right? They for a group, right? And then lui or lei for one thing. How, so this is for talking about people or things. How about talking to people because hmm? in this case we use a different set of pronouns right we have three possibilities we have two we have lei and we have voi remember we have two when we're talking to one person and we want to be informal we have lei when we're talking to one person but we want to be formal and we have voi when we want to talk to a group of people. Okay? Two, informal for one person, lay, formal for one person, voi for a group of people. So, let's think about these cases. If I want to talk to my mom, do I say tu, lei, or voi? Well, I know a few people that have very strict moms that would be offended if you, you didn't treat them formally. But I think the most common thing here is tu, right? You would talk informally to your mom, tu. How about a stranger on the subway? We talked a little bit about this when we introduced formal and informal discourse, right? In Italian, you tend to be formal to strangers. So what is the formal version of you? We would say lei. If I want to talk to my best friend, do I use to, lei, or voi? So it's one person, right? So I don't use voi. As my best friend, so I want to be informal, I use to. 
Now I want to talk to a group of people that includes my best friend but also my strict professor. What do I say? What do I use for groups of people? I say voi, you guys. Right? And if I want to talk to my cat, I know some people that tend to be very formal with their cats when they're joking, right? But, you know, unless you're joking, you would not go, you know, dearest senator cat or whatever, right? So, you're informal when you talk to your cat. You say to. How about your sister? Again, I know people that are somewhat distant when they talk to their siblings, but the most typical use would be to, right? You're informal to your sister. Now we're talking to a group of people that includes both Giovanni and Giovanna, so a man and a woman. What do we use? Well, it doesn't really matter what the gender are, what their genders are. We use voi, right? You guys. Now I want to talk to my strict professor, right? A very stilted guy. What do I say? I say lay, right? You want to be respectful because this guy is strict. Otherwise, he might get offended if you're informal to them. How about my girlfriend? I would say too, right? It would be very, very weird to be formal to your girlfriend, right? Maybe it would signal that there's some sudden distance, that something's not going well, right? So you want to be informal, you say too. How about my classmate in Italian class? Hmm? Well, this is one of those cases where I think you can choose between tu or lei. You can choose to be formal or informal, right? And this can even change, you know, as relationships change and mature. Even superficial relationships, right? You can start with lei, the first day of class, because you're total strangers, but maybe they're sitting next to you, maybe you know, you do a few exercise together, exercises together, you start, you know, knowing each other more, and at some point you can switch to two, right? So, lay would be the safest option, but if you feel comfortable with the person, you can choose to switch to the informal, okay? So, two, for talking to one person in an informal manner, Lay for talking to one person in a formal manner and void for talking to groups of people. Those are the uses of the personal pronouns in Italian. Right? And that's the first topic we wanted to review today. The second topic we want to review is the one we introduced for last class. Il verbo essere, the verb essere. So we're going to do our little table again, right? Remember, in our conjugation table, we have two columns. On the left, we have the personal pronouns, right? We have io for I, tu, for you and formal, lui and lei for he and she, and also the lei for formal, right? So notice that the conjugation changes when you're talking to someone in a formal manner. We have noi for we, we have voi for you guys, and we have loro for they, right? And then on the column on the right, we are supposed to put the conjugation of the verb, right? So how does this go? I hope you remember this. I hope you have reviewed this and memorized it, right? So let's do this very quickly. For io, which is the form of essere, sono, right? Io sono. For tu, which is the correct form of essere, tu, sei. For lui and lei, which is the correct form, e. For noi, what's the correct form of, of essere for noi? It's Siamo. And for voi, siete. And for loro, sono. Right? Remember, you need to memorize this. Right? And what does this mean? Again, io sono just means I am. Right? To say you are one person. Right? Lui è. He is. Lei è. She is. Noi siamo. We are. Voi siete. You guys are. And loro sono. They are. Right? So remember, memorize this. This is review from last class, right? But 
What I'm interested in most today is the use of the verb essere. Okay? So we're going to do a couple exercises with this verb. First, I'm going to talk about myself. You guys already know that I'm a narcissist and I cannot bear not to talk about myself, right? So I'm going to introduce myself in Italian. Okay? In this little paragraph. Problem being that I don't have the correct forms of essere in here, so you guys are going to have to help me. Let's see. Ciao, ragazzi. Io, blank, Umberto. So the blanks are for the essere forms. Io, blank, Umberto. Why, what would I be saying here? Well, clearly I'm saying I'm Umberto, right? But I'm missing the verb. What do I do? What must I insert here? Well, you'll, you see that I'm talking about myself, right? So I need to use the io form of the verb, right? I need to say I am. How do you say I am? You say io sono. Io sono Umberto. That means I'm Umberto, right? Io blank colombiano di Bogotá. I'm Colombian from Bogotá. Again, talking about myself, right? So I need to say I am. Io sono. Io sono colombiano di Bogotá. Now, mia moglie... Blank anche colombiana. Mia moglie means my wife. My wife, also Colombian, right? I'm talking about her. In English, I would say she is, right? So, is. What do I say instead of is in Italian? Right? What is the correct form of the verb for lei? I would say e. Mia moglie è anche colombiana. So, notice that first, the subject of the action was myself. So I would always say sono, io sono. Right? But now the subject of the action changed. I'm no longer talking about myself, now I'm talking about my wife. Right? So, since I'm talking about her, I would say lei è. Right? I change the pronoun, I also change the verb. But now I go back to myself, right? Io blank professore di italiano. Hmm? What do I put here? Again, I switch to io, so I also switch to sono. Io sono professore di italiano. I am an Italian professor. And now I switch again. Mia moglie blank disegnatrice. Right? My wife designer. Right? So, since I switched to her, Again, I switch to the correct version of essere. The, ver the version of essere for lei is e. Mia moglie è disegnatrice. My wife is a designer. And now I switch again. E tu chi blank? And you, who, you, who, who are you, right? So what form of you did I use? I used tu, right? So I need to use the correct form of essere, the one for tu. Tu, chi, sei, right? You, who are you? And I change again. Voi, chi, blank, right? You guys. So I'm no longer talking to one person. I'm talking to a group of people. Hmm? Who are you guys, right? So I need to change again. Change the verb for the voi form. Which is the voi form of essere? Voi siete, right? Voi, chi siete? Di dove siete? You, who are you guys? Where are you guys from? Are you guys students? Voi, blank studenti. Again, I'm using voi here, so I have to use siete. Voi siete studenti? This is what I mean when I say that whenever the subject of the, sub of the verb changes, whenever the subject of the verb changes, the conjugation of the verb must change as well, right? When the person or people doing the action change, you have to readjust the verb. So when I was talking about myself, I would always say, io sono. But when I switched to talking about my wife, I'd say, lei è, right? She is. Hmm? And when I switched to talking about you, I said, tu sei, when I was talking to one person. And I said, voi siete. You guys are when I was talking to a, a number of people. Okay? 
So that's an example of actual conjugation, actual use in sentences of the verb essere. Let's work on this a little bit more. First, let's keep this in mind, right? This should already be like imprinted in your mind, but let's have it here for reference. This is the conjugation of essere. Io sono, tu sei, lui lei è, noi siamo, voi siete, loro sono. Okay? And keeping that in mind, we're going to fill in the blank for the verb essere in these sentences. Right? So, Umberto Blank, professore di italiano. Notice it's not me talking about myself, right? We're talking about Umberto. So, how do we do this? Well, first we need to figure out who is doing the action. In this case, Umberto, professor di italiano, who's doing the action of being an Italian professor? Umberto is, right? Good. That's the first step. We figure out who was doing the action. Second step. We need to figure out what pronoun we would use. Right? So what pronoun would we use for Umberto? Would we use io? No, because we're not it's not Umberto talking about himself, we're talking about him, right? Would we use to? No, we're not talking to anybody, right? We're talking about him. Would we use lei? No, because it's not a woman, it's a man. Would we use Louis? Yes, right? We would use Louis to talk about a man. Louis. So that was the second step, right? First, we figured out that it's Umberto doing the action. Now we know that Louis is the pronoun we would use. Third step, just choose that form of the verb for that pronoun, which is E. And that is the form of essere that we use in this sentence. Umberto E, professore di italiano, which means Umberto is an Italian professor. So three steps. First, Locate the subject of the action. Find who is doing the action that the verb talks about. Second, figure out which pronoun you would use for this subject and then use the correct form of essere. So now we're switching the subject, right? First it was just Umberto, now we have two people, Umberto and Jose. Right? So it's no longer Louis, right? Because it's a it's a group of people. Remember, we're talking about them. Right? So what pronoun would we use in Italian to talk about Umberto and Jose? We would use loro, right? We would use they. So that is the form of essere we need. Umberto e Jose sono professore di italiano. Next sentence. A hostos gli studenti blank bravi. At hostos, students blank good. Bravo means basically being good at something or being smart, intelligent, strong. Okay? So a host of students are good. Who does the action here? Students, right? Studenti. That is our subject. What would we use for talking about students in Italian. Would we use lui? No, because it's not just one student, nor lei. Would we use voi? No, because we're not talking to them, we're talking about them. Right? We would use loro. Right? They. So that is the form of the verb we need. So here in this third sentence, we were talking about all hostel students. Now we're going to talk about individual hostel students. For example, Johnny. Johnny is also very good. Johnny Blanco uno studente molto bravo. What pronoun do we use to talk about Johnny? Louis. Right? 
So what form of the verb do we use here? Johnny E. Uno studente molto bravo. How about Mary? We would not use Louis, we would use lei, right? Because now it's a woman. But the form of the verb stays the same. For both Louis and lei, essere turns into E. So Mary E. Una studentessa molto brava. Mary is a very good student. Now, Pay attention to the next sentence. Johnny, tu, blank, uno studente molto bravo. So, we're not talking about Johnny anymore. We're talking to him. We're saying, Johnny, you are a very good student. So, we don't use E anymore. That's where when we're talking about him, but we, if we want to address him, right, informally, if we want to say tu, what is the correct form of essere? Johnny, to say, uno studente molto bravo. Johnny, you are a very good student. Now we want to talk to Mary, right? Again, we use to, so we also use say. Mary, to say, una studentessa molto bravo. Mary, you are a very good student. Hmm? So I hope we're catching on to what's going on here. Every time that we change the subject of the verb, we also change the form of the verb. Let's switch it again. Tutti voi blank studenti molto bravi. So I'm talking to a group of students, right? And I'm using voi because that's what you use to talk to groups of people, right? So you use the form of the verb for voi. Tutti voi siete studenti molto bravi. All of you guys are very good students, right? And now I switch again to talk about us, because all of us are good, right? Not just the students, everybody. This is a very positive message, I guess, the one we have for all these Ezra examples. Tutti noi black, molto bravi, bravissimi. I don't use siete anymore, because I'm not using voi anymore, right? I'm not talking to a group of people. I'm talking about a group of people that includes myself, and I'm saying that all of us are good, right? So let's use the... Noi form of essere. Tutti noi siamo molto bravi, bravissimi. Now the next one. This one can be a little tricky. Gli esercizi con il verbo essere blank noiosi. So that means exercises with the verb essere are boring. And I know they are, right? So what is doing the action of being here? There's no people in this sentence, right? But that's okay. Objects or even ideas can do actions in sentences. In this case, who is doing the action of being? Exercises are boring. Well, the exercises are the ones doing the action of being boring, right? And what pronoun would we use here? Remember? The exercise with the pronoun where we said that grammatical exercises for talking about them you would use they right same thing in Italian so you you, you would use loro right for gli esercizi the exercises you would use loro you would use they so what form of essere do we use sono gli esercizi con il verbo essere sono noiosi exercises with the verb essere are my verb is essere blank facile, but the verb essere is easy, right? So in English we switch to is because it's no longer exercises, which are a lot, but also the verb essere, which is one thing. In English you would say is. What would you say in Italian? You would say è. Il verbo essere è facile, right? You would say lui. The next one, oggi blank il 14 settembre. Today is September the 14th. So again, no people here. Who is doing the action of being? The day, right? Today. Oggi means today. Today. That is our subject. Well, what pronoun do I use for this thing? It's just like the one before, right? Like the verb essere. It's one thing, right? So when it's one thing, one object, one idea doing the action of being, you use E, right? Oggi E, il 14 settembre, right? 
And then voi blank molto intelligenti. You guys are very intelligent. What do we use here? Well, we use the voi form of the verb. Voi siete molto intelligenti. Avete imparato il verbo essere. You guys are very intelligent. We have learned the verb essere. Right? So this is the way you actually use the verb essere in sentences, right? You have to think about who is doing the action and then you have to switch the verb, change it for the correct form so that it matches the subject. Umberto è professore di italiano, Umberto is an Italian professor. Mary è una studentessa molto brava, Mary is a very good student. Hmm? Uh, tutti noi siamo molto bravi, all of us are very good. Right? You switch the form of the verb every time you switch the subject. Grazie ragazzi, keep on studying. A presto.